finally, we've got the final slide here, which tells us that we're going to be listening to Geeta, who's going to be talking about strengthening elements of breastfeeding experience during the pandemic in Indonesia. All right. So Geeta, I'll put you um, back as the, oh, let's go straight onto your slides. I'll put you down as the um, make you hostess now. All right, so I'd just like to introduce Gita. Gita works as a midwifery lecturer and researcher at the Department of Midwifery Education Program Facility of Health at the University Rispati Yogarata, Indonesia. Um, she has a background in midwifery science and she gained her Masters of Midwifery at the Universitas Pajandaran, exploring the importance of nutrition for children using a mobile application that she developed. Since then, her research has continued to examine maternal and child health, infant feeding, breastfeeding, mental health and gender equality that relates to nutrition. Her ability to critically think about field related practices and competencies has positioned her to effectively advocate and advance the field to a diverse population of maternal and child health. Gita is an award winning researcher. In 2019, she was awarded the Yogyakarta City Innovation and Research Award as the initiator of the portable lactation room in the tourist area of Yogyakarta City. She is founder of Durang Sahiti and Rimanja Bukharak 8000 HPK, a member of the Indonesian Association of Midwives, the Gender Equity Hub of Women in Global Health, a member of the Global Vaccine Trust Leadership Forum, which is an international paediatric association trust, a member of Quality Maternal and Newborn Care in Yale School of Nursing and Director of the Research Field at Yaksiasan Bidban Burbangi, Indonesia. Gita, I will hand over to you and I uh, hope I didn't go too badly with all the pronunciations. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Terry. Uh, first of all, I I would like to say thank you so much to Dr. Terry, who uh, you because you for your willingness to be my facilitator here. You are so uh, incredible. Uh, thank you so much. Dr. Terry, and then good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming here to my presentation and taking time out of such a busy schedule. Um, I'm Dewati Lilania Kinarum, and everyone call everyone can call me Gita, and I'm originally from um, Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Um, I'm a midwifery lecturer and researcher from Universitas Respati Yogyakarta, Indonesia, and I hope you will find this topic informative and interesting. So the topic of my talk is strengthening elements of breastfeeding experience during the pandemic in Indonesia. Yeah, this is you. You can uh, you can reach me here. Uh, this is my contact number and then email. Oh. So at this moment, I'm going to say thank you for Mother Hope Indonesia, Universitas Respati Yogyakarta, and our lovely breastfeeding mothers and Yogyakarta city government. I'm just speaking to say uh, thanks for the assistance on the research last year. Uh, we really appreciate you stepping into 
support us. I know you had to put um, extra hours in extra hours to catch up on your own work. So thank you so much. And your expertise was vital for this research and I couldn't have finished it successfully without you. And you really help us and, we, and I hope you uh, and I hope to work with you again on future research. So, yeah. So I'm going. I'm going to the next slide. <laughs> this is the next slide. Um, Indonesia and the COVID nineteen. Yeah. And you know that Indonesia is one of uh, the countries affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, people are often deprived of resources to survive due to natural disasters. These natural disasters can lead to sporadic increase in unemployment and lack of food, making situation worse. Um, Breastfeeding will continue to provide the cleanness and service nutrition for babies and serve as the normative standard for infant nutrition in disaster situation. Um, most studies document no, resp uh, no respiratory or other illness in neonates born to mothers with confirmed or suspected infection with SARS-CoV-2. In addition, a recent report found that 12 out of 15 mothers, around 80%, previously infected with, uh, with COVID-19 had a strong IgA SARS-CoV-2. This is the breastfeeding here. Yeah human right that needs to be respected, protected, and fulfilled. Um, you know that UN experts have highlighted practical steps to promote, support, and protect breastfeeding, such as paid maternity leave, workplace, workers, and ensuring women have accurate information so they can make informed choice about optimal feeding practices. They also call uh, for access to quality breastfeeding substitutes to be better regulated and affordable. Um, uh, uh, I remember that uh, children have the right to live, uh, children have uh, the right to life, yeah, and then survival and development and to the highest attainable standard of health of which breastfeeding must be considered an integral component is information in order to make from informed choice about breastfeeding and they like to um, appropriate conditions in public spaces for breastfeeding which are crucial to ensure Success. Um, lack of corporate accountability at first consequences of breast milk marketing practices um, compete the breastfeeding and continue to undermine efforts to improve early and exclusive breastfeeding rates and act as a barrier for women of, uh, to exercise their rights and states should uh, work towards introducing and scaling up simple seven cost-effective interventions, including the creation of an enabling environment to protect, promote, and practices. So, yeah. I, well, actually, English is not my mother language, so I apologize if my English not clear. Um, okay. Um, okay. I I continue to uh, present my presentation. Well, breastfeeding is a critical first step to a healthy future, but 
as a foundation for a child's future health and well-being. Breastfeeding also is a critical element of worldwide development efforts to create a more healthy, prosperous, and sustainable planet. As a practical step towards protecting the survival and health of babies and women, breastfeeding is a central part of the 20 and 30 uh, agenda for sustainable development and is linked to many the example. This is the goals one, eight, and ten. First on ending poverty, promoting economic. Breastfeeding is associated with adding um, around 30, 102 billion US dollar annually in additional income to the world economy, nearly 0.5% of world gross uh, national industry. And then goals two and three are concerned with hunger, health, and well-being. Breastfeeding is a vital source of nutrition that can save and uh, the goal four is about education. The association between uh, breastfeeding and higher IQs and edu educational to um, achieving global learning targets. Uh, and then the goals, uh, goal five uh, centers on gender equality. Breastfeeding is linked to critical equality issues, including broad spacing and workplace rights. And then the last one is goals uh, 12, tackle sustainable consumption. Breast milk doesn't require industry for production and is created and consumed with a minimal ecological footprint. As national governments budgets and action plans to achieve the SDGs, breastfeeding should be a priority. Uh, what is it? Breastfeeding contributes not only uh, to achieving many of the, the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, it's also a critical component to, of the global strategy for women's, children's, and adolescents' health. And then... I'm going to the next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, recent research estimates that the increase in exclusive breastfeeding in the world can prevent 823,000 child mortalities and to, uh, uh, 20,000 maternal mortalities from breast cancer annually. And the benef benefits of breastfeeding have been expanded due to the epidemiological and biological discoveries over the past past decades. Despite this, low rates of breastfeeding are still reported in Indonesia. And the prevalence of exclusive breastfeeding in children uh, under six months was 54.3%, uh, less than 80%, which is the national target of exclusive breastfeeding coverage. In Indonesia, the proportion of mothers who didn't breastfeed their babies because of lack of milk supply was 65.7% and 68.3% uh, babies in the zero until six months age group were not breastfed for the same reason. And I'm going to the next slide. Yes. Um, policies and strategies developed in Indonesia to promote, protect, and support breastfeeding are considered limited and fragmented. So it's necessary to increase the legal status of existing breastfeeding policies to improve the commitment towards increased use to breast milk. Breastfeeding is the best source of nourishment for infants and young children and a proven life-saving strategy that helps protect children against many common childhood illnesses such as diarrhea, um, pneumonia, and it's well established that breastfed children uh, perform better on intelligence tests, are, are less likely to be obese or overweight, and um, are less prone, prone to um, non-communicable uh, disease later in life. Yeah, and you know that 
uh, UNICEF Indonesia representative uh, said that breastfeeding provides countless health social and economic benefits for both children and uh, their mothers and now more than ever we need to support breastfeeding mothers so they give their children the best possible start in life for this we need to ensure that all breastfeeding mothers are vaccinated against COVID-19 in order to be protected against the virus and able, uh, and able, able to care for their child. Um, even before the pandemic, only one invents under exclusively, exclusively breastfed in Indonesia with the uh, median duration of exclusive breastfeeding only lasting three months and 12 months and 23 months of age, three quarters and slightly more than half of infants continue to breastfeed uh, respectively. And the pandemic has brought uh, new challenges for mothers, for mothers who are not only concerned about um, about the safety of breastfeeding, but social restrictions also mean that breastfeeding support is harder to find. And moreover, with the health system in Indonesia stretched by the COVID-19 crisis, counseling and skill lactation support for mothers has been strained. A national survey conducted by the Ministry of Health with support uh, from UNICEF reported that less than 50% of mothers and caregivers of children aged under the age of two received breastfeeding counseling during the pandemic and the situation has been worsened by uh, frequent viola violations of the international code of marketing of breast, breast milk um, substitutes as the benefits of breastfeeding are a significant mother with confirmed or suspected COVID-19 infection and who are isolating at home should continue breastfeeding with necessary and appropriate health uh, protocols during feeding and mothers should also be um, advised to continue breastfeeding if their child is suspected or confirmed to have uh, COVID-19. So, yeah. and during the COVID-19 pandemic, the government has superficially explored the roles of families, health providers professionals, communities, and the state in the country. The success of breastfeeding is a social responsibility collectively besides being uh, the, the decisions of the women. It's the responsibility of all to protect and support a uh, mother to breastfeed the children. And then optimal breastfeeding is so critical and important. That is one of the most effective ways to ensure optimal child health and survival. And then uh, a study reported that maternal intentions, maternal and child health conditions, maternal occupation, family support, health provisionals and cultural issue, issues influence uh, the incidence and duration of breastfeeding. And the study reported the importance of more studies that seek to develop maternal and professional skills for sustaining breastfeeding and strength, uh, strengthening strategic actions to support um, breastfeeding mothers. So, this is the prevalence of exclusive breastfeeding during the COVID-19 pandemic in Indonesia. Based on a study uh, conducted in Indonesia, it turns out that breastfeeding mothers who work from home are uh 97.8 percent successful in exclusive breastfeeding meanwhile breastfeeding mothers who work from the office have succeeded in providing 82.9 uh, percent exclusive breastfeeding during the um covid19 uh during the covid19 you know that there has been an increase in the achievement of exclusive breastfeeding in indonesia during the pandemic because home so they spend in addition there are many breastfeeding mothers who cannot get out of the house 
So mothers continue to breastfeed their children and do not buy um, formula milk, yeah. And then um, maybe the mothers uh, afraid of COVID-19 uh, coronavirus, yeah. So they continue to um, breastfeed their babies. And this uh, research uh, question is, what are the elements that strengthen breastfeeding in lactating women who are affected by the pandemic? So uh, this is uh, the method, yeah. We, we use an explore, exploratory collaborative design with purposive sampling techniques to recruit breastfeeding mothers who have mild and moderate stress based on the PSS. 10, you know, PSS 10 is perceived uh, stress scale 10 instrument. Yeah, a qualitative design approach provides a comprehensive uh, understanding of a particular situation, a description that conveys participants' experience or actions from their perspective. Qualitative approach uh, approaches are the basic for qualitative research and include um, uh, meaningful methodological approaches without a theoretical framework. And in addition, uh, the qualitative findings of exploration can provide information about new intervention in the socio-cultural context of the exploratory qualitative study is considered appropriate because the comprehensive study aims to gain an in-depth understanding of the paradigm seen from breastfeeding mothers who have experienced breastfeeding during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and then the study setting and participants. Uh, the study was conducted in Yogyakarta Special Region Province in Indonesia and breastfeeding mothers who were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic either psychologically or physically and didn't breastfeed their baby at the time of data collection in different districts, uh, districts in the province participated in uh, the study. And then the participants recruitment uh, for postpartum and lactating mothers less than three months were purposefully recruited from uh, four districts for districts in the urban urban setting of Yogyakarta, Indonesia, like dating mothers who didn't breastfeed their baby during data collect data collection were not included in the study. And then the eligible participants who were invited to participate in the study by the author or researcher, and they were informed about the the aims of the study of data collection. were victims of sexual violence, i.e. rape, yeah, before they had a baby and one of them uh, didn't marry. Data collection and then the data analysis. Uh, we collected and analyzed the data and in total nine interviews were completed uh, and generated um, the required number of participants was not determined before the study was carried out and the researchers collected data until it reached a saturation level. Um, the purposive sampling method was used because of the difficulty in identifying participants and face-to-face -face using topic guidelines and the COVID-19 pandemic and then the interviews explored the it like to they feel about the impact of uh, COVID-19 pandemic um, the changes that had lives since uh, the initial period of the pandemic their plans for breastfeeding during the pandemic from home and where they would find any help, as well as strengthening and weakening factors during breastfeeding in a pandemic situation. And then the 
data were collected between November and December uh, 2020 and each interview lasted approximately 45 until 60 minutes and all, intervi and all interviews were audio recorded and transcribed word by word or verbatim in Japanese and translated into Indonesian by the uh, me and then um, another person confirmed accuracy between the the audio recording and the transcription as independent assessor and then the data analysis um, that data were analyzed using six stages of thematic analysis including data introduction initial codes generation theme source theme study and theme definition and naming and reporting and then um we also use an vivo 12 to facilitate us to perform iterative uh, data management and emerging themes uh were arranged according to the semantic code semantic content of the codes yeah and then uh -oh. this is the result so this is the RISA table. This is the table one baseline characteristic of um, participants. Yeah, and wait a minute. This is the mother's educational level, um, and then mother's employment status, breastfeeding period, uh, parity, household income, income, and uh myriad status yeah so this is the table two the terms uh, identified through interviews with breastfeeding mothers uh, at, at at the time of data collection all participants in this study were still breastfeeding yeah and the majority of press uh, of participants had a higher education but didn't work and earn from their husband slightly more than the provincial minimum wage and um there were only two unmarried participants uh at the table one yeah the previous previous slide one participant uh, was a rape victim and while the other was the result of incest with her brother and then according to the windings of the interviews there are very strengthen and uh, strengthen participants breastfeeding during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is the strengthening elements, maternal affection of uh, to her baby, and then support system from family and community, and having adaptive uh, coping strategy. I'm going to the next slide. Yeah. The maternal affection uh, to her baby to keep breastfeeding and preventing COVID-19 transmission by these mothers having a baby are as a, are as uh, follows that uh, the participant five say that I have a baby so I didn't do the things that uh, can put my baby and my family in a dangerous situation yeah and then the participant eight say that if breastfeeding mothers can be vaccinated i'm the first one who would like to register because i have a baby and i must protect her yeah and then um you know that maternal affection to her baby yeah that breast milk is an excellent source of nutrition for newborns and infants it protects This respiratory infections, obesity, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, asthma, and other illnesses. According to a uh, recent study, yeah, uh, 12 of 15 mothers, around 80% who had previously been infected by COVID-19 had a strong IgA, SARS-CoV-2 immune response in their breast milk. Since they were aware of 
the benefits of breastfeeding, the mothers in this study believe that should breastfeed their children. This decision is based on the mother's love for the child that she has given birth to after a long and challenging labor. These findings were consistent with a study in uh, Portugal that found more affection in women who receive support from breastfeeding counseling group. Breastfeeding is also important from an emotional standpoint in the mother-baby interaction because of the cooperation, closeness, and visual contact, allowing a receiving of gradual bonds, i.e. a rich and complex bond between a mother and her child. And then uh, the majority of participants have a high level of education, which makes it easier for them to understand the benefits of breastfeeding and protecting their children during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, resulting in a stronger attachment to babies. Yeah, And then um, maternal affection was not um, influenced by age, marital. Uh, marital status, employment status, residence, number of pregnancies, pregnancy monitoring, length of breastfeeding, time interval before breastfeeding, pregnancy plan, or desire to become pregnant, or type of delivery. Yeah, and um, we also discovered that they continue to breastfeed their child, their child despite having a low income because their husband receive less pay as an impact of the pandemic situation. Uh, they felt that formula milk was not affordable uh, for them. Yeah. Okay, so. This is the support system from family and community. Um, you know that when we, uh, when we collected the data since, uh, since the pandemic began, most activities have been carried out online, right? It also affects, uh, breastfeeding mothers' behavior in seeking information to increase knowledge by taking online classes and utilizing life features on social media such as Instagram Live and Facebook Live. So uh, like participant three said that I can join on IG Live and free online class. It can reduce my stress because of uh, this pandemic. Yeah. And then uh, the other participant said that uh, even though my husband and I live separately, but he absolutely supports me for exclusive breastfeeding. Yeah. So support from husband and parents also could reduce stress and support breastfeeding in a pandemic situation, right? Um, and then uh, participant uh, seven also, participant nine said that I almost committed suicide. Yeah, I almost committed suicide, but my parents strengthened me. And then my mother told me to clean my breast and nipple every time I took a bath and thank God uh, my mother always supports me yeah they say they said like that so another support uh, system from um, what is it from parents from husband and then uh, from online community could build the stress relief in breastfeeding mothers because um, uh, the participant one also said to me that I got support to keep breastfeeding my baby from my community on Facebook, yeah, on community community on IG, Instagram, yeah, community on uh, Twitter, yeah, just like that. And then yeah, this is the adaptive coping. Um, this study found one of the coping strategies carried out by breastfeeding mothers to reduce stress in lactating during COVID-19. And then this strategy is emotion-focused 
uh, coping as a strategy for reducing the stress causing situation while breastfeeding during the pandemic through positive reappraisal, distancing, and escape. Um, participant four uh, said to me that at the end of the day, I thought that God would be with us and provide sustenance for us, even this pandemic situation. Yeah, and then the participant seven, uh, another participant also said to me that I'm grateful for this pandemic situation with the government policy to stay at home and keep the distance. Thus, I did not interact with my neighbors who mean to me. <laughs> they said, uh, um, he said, she, she said like that. Yeah, and then um, she, all, uh, she also told me that I'm trying to forget the bad things that happened in my past. I do not follow my bad people on social on my social media, and I try to focus on selling, keep myself busy, and then salat, yeah, pray, praise to God, and several times I participate in online uh, recitation. Yes. Emotion focus coping as a strategy, yeah, for reducing the stress causing situation while breastfeeding during the uh, pandemic, and then. Uh, the problem focus coping by seeking social support is also a coping strategy for reducing and healing stress. Like um, another uh, participant told me that my friends in breastfeeding community or perinatal mental health community on Facebook always help me information about healthy life so that it can make me better and I'm not confused anymore. Yeah, they. Uh, she said. She told me like that. Yeah, um, you know that um, support system from family and community like uh, show that under unconditional support from husband, families, and communities immensely help these women, these um, breastfeeding women maintain their commitment to breastfeeding during the pandemic. Participation in breastfeeding activities makes capable and confident about breastfeeding, yeah? right? So, um, husbands are highly influential in influencing mothers' decision about breastfeeding their children and whether or not to continue breastfeeding. This for husband is critical for successful breastfeeding practice and exclusive breastfeeding for up to six months. And then having adaptive cough, coughing, yeah, um, you know that all of the participants uh, face some problems related to multiple problems in the pandemic situation. They realized that becoming a breastfeeding mother during the pandemic was very challenging and prone to stress. To overcome that, our participants used two types of coping strategy. The first one is a problem focus coping by seeking social support, such as joining on Instagram Live or Facebook Live webinars and talking uh, with their friends in the breastfeeding community on Facebook. And the second one is em emotion focus coping through positive reappraisal, being grateful and surrounding to God following um, physical distancing during um, a pandemic and escaping from negative people who remind them to bad experience in the past, such as in the case of a victim of sexual violence, yeah? Um, you know that, however, all participants attempted to handle all the problems by using coping strategies. Participants performed coping strategies not only after the problems appear, but also before such problems appear as they didn't uh, did anticipatory and preventive coping so that coping can be seen as something that can be done before the stress or distress emerge. Yeah, and um, anticipatory coping means that someone shows an effort to deal with an imminent threat or even a critical even shortly. Efforts are made to build um, if you're a distress, 
stress through the preventive cupping. And then beside taking uh, the anticipatory and preventive patients also perform reactive cupping, which means to deal with an ongoing stressful encounter or one or or one that um, has already happened. Yeah. And then um, after the problem appear, participants try to fish by using cupping strategies such as problems and emotion focused cupping, and that can be concluded as a reactive cupping. Yeah. Then this is the. Um, Yeah, this is the this is the conclusion. Um, breast milk is full with complete and natural nutrition. In addition, it contains or other elements that promote child growth and protection against infection, including the transmission of SARS-CoV-2. Their breast milk also contains a strong IgA, yeah, uh, IgA SARS-CoV-2 immune response, apart from being caused by the mother's immune defenses to the child. The possibility of breast milk being contaminated is also low. It will provide allergy protection and adaptation. And breastfeeding is also important from an emotional standpoint in the mother-baby interaction because of the cooperation, closeness, and visual contact, allowing reciprocity, and the formation of gradual uh, rich and complex child bond. Yeah? And it can be concluded from this qualitative inquiry that breastfeeding mothers had strengthening uh, elements in lactating during the COVID-19 pandemic. These women cited valid reasons for their strength in lactating during the pandemic, such as maternal infection, affection to her baby, support system, adaptive cupping strategy. These reasons point to the ability of these women to keep breastfeeding during the pandemic. And other findings highlight the weakening um, uh, what is it? The uncertainty in monthly income because of salary uh, deduction prompted them to continue breastfeeding and not buy formula milk because the latter was not affordable for them. Yeah. And as a result, these women adopted a more empowered position and regained control of their circumstances. And even though it was difficult um, for them. For them, yeah, and the the weaken the weakening elements, the weakening elements. So the last one is this is my this is our portable public lactation room in the tourist area of Yogyakarta city. Yeah, we call this uh, ruang sahati, uh, the portable uh, public lactation room. Um. We plan that the construction will be completed by the end of this month. So please pray for us and so that it can be immediately used by tourists who are breastfeeding mothers in the city of Yogyakarta. Or if you, um, what is it? If you, if you are going to go to Yogyakarta city, so please come here and then uh, use our portable public lactation room in the tourist area of Yogyakarta City. Thank you so much. Breast Thank you, Gita. Yeah, that you so was absolutely much. fantastic. Can I invite you to um, um, put any questions in the public chat? That would be wonderful. Um, and we've probably only got about time for one, one question. So uh, we have to close up by 1.50. Um, I might just ask you a quick question, Gita, while we're waiting for people to type. Um, you mentioned early on that about 65.7% of mothers did not breastfeed due to a lack of milk supply. I found that an incredibly high number of women who were saying that they didn't have um, a very good milk supply. However, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, suddenly that number um, you know, was considerably decreased. And I was wondering why you think that might be that the, suddenly they had a better milk supply during COVID. Hmm. Lack of supply. Because lack of supply, I think... Uh, 
Sorry, Dr. Terry. Can you yes, hear you me? mentioned that um, six, over 65 percent of women had no milk supply prior to COVID, and then suddenly that number reduced when COVID hit. Mm. That, that back back one. No. Oh. That side then. Yeah. Yes, so 65% of babies. Um. Mm -mm. mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, before before the COVID-19 pandemic, feeding in ch children under six months was 54.3%. Yeah, because uh, I don't know, maybe uh, the uh, mothers, uh, breastfeeding mothers, um what is it uh uh they 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 feel that uh lack of milk supply and then and then um they feel that uh they cannot breastfeed uh their baby anymore yeah and then so uh lack of milk supply was high higher and then um I, I guess my question was why why do you think the lack of um why do you think they lacked the milk supply that's a very high number of people that don't have milk oh yeah because uh maybe it's uh from different source different source this is from uh risk as this risk as Yeah, last year we we collected the data and this is the the number the number of uh lack of milk supply so it's so different different what is it different different source this is from indonesia data from uh research indonesia based on the research indonesian research data and then this is from uh data from us from our research last year. Okay, all right, thank you. Well, we have to end it there. Thank you everyone for participating and thank you so much, Geeta. That was an absolutely amazing presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Terry.